Hey Finksters, what's up? It's Chris, founder of Finksters.com and in today's video I'm excited to, um, get, to provide a book review about um, my friend Professor Daniel Zingaro's new book Learn to Code by Solving Problems. So this is a book, I just got, just got this from the, from the publisher, uh, it's a no starch book, like uh, 200, almost 300 pages, so we have 290 pages of like condensed uh, Python um, content and I will go over the over this book and provide you uh, provide a review and just tell you about about the book and some code snippets in the book. Uh, it should be rather quick and uh, ba basically I have decided to um, to go over like three main um, categories uh, that I want to evaluate based on my opinion obviously and uh, it, like the first category is the author uh, himself. Uh, Professor Daniel Zingaro, then the book idea. Um, do I find the book idea like reasonable or is it, is it, is it a unique uh, and valuable uh, book idea and helpful book idea for potential readers? And the third uh, category is the technical execution. And I will provide a ranking for each of those categories and then average the overall ranking to give you the final, sc final score of, uh, of the book. And uh, I, sh I think it should be fun. It, uh, it should be uh, um, uh, not too um uh judgmental hopefully <laughs> and obviously obviously so i'm not i'm not affiliated in any way i don't earn anything if you buy the book uh i, I don't re receive a commission or anything it's just uh so you can be sure that i don't just recommend the book um for financial uh personal financial gain reasons <laughs> okay so let's dive into the book uh first of all um I want to answer the question, is the author qualified to write a book about programming? Anyways, so Daniel, Daniel is a computer science uh, teaching professor at the University of Toronto. Uh, his daily work is centered around computer science education. As a professor, uh, he taught thousands of students how to program. And actually, this is his second, uh, second book with No Starch. So the first book was Al Algorithmic Thinking, which was already a very popular bestseller from No Starch. Um, he has even won awards for his teaching endeavors. So he's not only a computer scientist and really skilled in his field, he's, he's also focused on teaching. And even his PhD research was actually centered around how to teach effectively. And as I, as I said, he won some awards for his, his teaching endeavors. So um, clearly, like it's tough to even find an author that is, who is more qualified to write an introdu introduction to Python book or introduction to programming book, right? So just considering uh, the, the author, author himself, so the author should, so let's maybe, let's clear this calculator. So just evaluating the author himself about the author it's definitely is a five star five stars for being uh, very very so being like the perfect um, um educator and perfect teacher for computer science material and i think he also uh, has chosen the topic in its field of interest and in its so he has a lot of experience actually teaching these computer science basics computer science topics and actually in the book he, he also covers topics like the big o uh, notation and, com and com computational complexity which are uh, very relevant for e every computer science students and um, a student and i think uh, i think it, this this book really um, um, contains all the material that would be chosen by a person who is really skilled in their field, right? So definitely, like, uh, it is without a question. Uh, this is five stars out of five stars. Uh, the author in the in the author category, right? So let's uh, dive into the second category, uh, which is the book idea, the overall book idea, and it will take a bit longer to actually discuss the book idea. So, is this a unique book or is it just another Python introduction? So the book idea is simple so the reader is guided through 25 programming uh, problems and each has the same structure so first of all uh, the it explains the programming challenge on a high level uh, it so it actually you could you could think of it as a problem formulation and i mean it's professor daniel zingaro is also a researcher so every research paper starts with a problem formulation and then uh, actually giving the solution later later on in the research paper and this book is actually it's a, the structure is very similar to this so it starts with the problem formulation so it starts with a challenge programming challenge uh, initially the challenge is easy and then it gets harder and harder over time as the reader uh, progresses in their knowledge about python features and um 
he also specifies that the second part, the first part is just giving the challenge on a high level. Then the second one is to specify the inputs and the desired outputs. The third part is to give relevant background information. And then uh, he discusses the solution. So we have those four parts for each 25, uh, each of the 25 chapters. So it's a very well structured book. And uh, it's actually an active learning uh, technique, which is one of the strengths of uh, Daniel Zingaro's uh, teaching um, uh, focus. So he, he focuses strongly on active learning techniques. And um, so if you, if, you, if you know other programming books, many programming books actually simply repackage the official Python documentation and the reader is often left alone wondering, why am I even learning this? What is the purpose of this, of this specific Python feature that is discussed there? And like there are many like Python Bible books that actually discuss fe feature after feature after feature after feature. It's very boring to read, uh, not exciting. It doesn't, uh, it is not emotionally, um, um, it doesn't resonate emotionally with the reader in any way. So it doesn't open a problem, open a knowledge gap or anything. And uh, yeah, Tsingaro's book is really different. It prepares the reader to actually absorb the newly learned information by making them aware about what they don't know yet. Okay, and in contrast to many other programming books, in Garo's book, it doesn't tr simply try to throw in as many facts and factoids as possible. It uh, it just provides the information that is necessary to solve the given problem, right? Which is like this is a perfect way of learning, in my opinion, to uh, like a problem-oriented, problem-focused um, um, learning approach. So step one and step two that we have discussed, uh, so, th so describing the challenge and describing the input and output mappings, it opens the knowledge gap in the reader's mind, prepares the reader to actually absorb and understand the information, motivates the reader to, 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 to think about what he, does, he or she doesn't know. And then if they later um, get or read, about, read over the information in the step four, in, in the solution, they can actually, uh, uh, they can recognize uh, that, the, that the solution actually closes their knowledge gap. So, in, so intuitively, it, it makes a lot of sense to, to actually have this ordering of, to a, first of all, open a knowledge gap and then fill the knowledge gap with a kind of eureka moment in the, in the student's mind, right? Uh, but step three, in my opinion, is innov innovative because, uh, as I said, uh, Stingaro first um, describes the problem and the challenges, and then he also gives some background information so that the reader is actually able to... Um, to uh, to develop their own solutions and to, so it is empowering to uh, go over the background information and to learn the, the things you need to develop your own solution and then he just discusses the expert solution so this is like kind of the perfect innovative approach it is not like it is innovative in a way because this this additional step where he provides the background information after giving the challenge i think this is an, it's an innovative approach um so um, and so overall, I think the format, the structure and the, bo uh, uh, the book idea is actually well developed. The book makes the objective solving problems, the first class citizen, which leads not only to a better learning retention and faster understanding of the material. It also teaches the students the art of thinking for themselves, right? And uh, as a bonus, readers also learn to solve problems, which prepares them for interviews, uh, programming in interviews, um, and also improve, improves their uh, problem solving capabilities. And the book idea itself is not particularly novel. So many, many people, of course, many teachers have used the exact same ideas for thousands of years. Uh, but even though the book idea is not very novel, it is simple and very powerful and uh, it wouldn't make sense to actually penalize for simplicity, right? So uh, it is simple, powerful, it just works. It, is, it uses a proven and effective learning uh, method. So the book idea, uh, in my opinion, deserves five out of five stars as well. So we have the author, five out of five stars, the book idea, five out of five stars. So let's open the calculator and update uh, our formula. So currently we are at 10 stars, right? So later on we need to normalize it. <laughs> okay, now the, th the third uh, criteria is the technical execution. Is the book well written? Does it contain a lot of technical material? And um, let's, let's, uh, let's shed some light on these questions next. So Tsingaro's book is very well structured. It's thoroughly edited. It's a Python textbook that obviously went through several rounds of editing, right? And you, you won't find a lot of grammar issues, spelling issues, technical mistakes, bugs. And uh, the fact that it is written with one of the most successful Python publishers in the world, No Starch Press, uh, actually is 
evident on every page on the book. So it's a very well written, uh, very nicely executed technical uh, uh, Python book. Um, one common problem that many Python books, even expert uh, written Python books have that uh, or professionally edited Python books uh, is that they often violate the PEP8 coding standard in many instances. PEP8 coding standards like a Python uh, Python um, um, best practices kind of yeah so and and many authors actually are not aware of those many have not absorbed them even like many many programmers who actually come from different languages like c plus plus or java they don't know the ins and outs of pi of the python programming language uh they don't know how to write pythonic code right so they don't know about set comprehension and list comprehension that well and so on uh, Professor Daniel Zingaro knows about most of those uh, things, so he's a very like he's an expert coder, obviously, and you see it in uh, especially in the conceptual part is really like outstanding. He's an outstanding programmer and um, outstanding human being and uh, outstanding writer, and in any in any way like the technical execution is really outstanding. Uh, but I found some minor minor issues with the code. So I think uh, I think so. Let's let's maybe open a open a Python shell to show you some minor minor details. So here, this is one main one main program uh, that you can find on page two hundred fourteen uh, uh, in the book. I think this is not so idiomatic Python here. So it, it iterates over a data set in a given range. It uh, reads a uh, user input and then so you have like this nested for loop uh, and the second for loop, this inner for loop is just to actually fill some addresses into a set, right? And I would say most Python experts would actually prefer, so would just replace these five lines with a single line using set comprehension, right? So this line here basically would accomplish the same thing. Uh, it would make the code, so this is not in the book now, this is just, I, so I, have, de I have developed this, this solution. It's not like, it's not very fancy solution, but it does it accomplish the same thing, right? So it uh, uses the set function, it uses set comprehension, uh, so-called. You don't need to understand it, but you can just see, so most expert coders would actually use set comprehension here rather than, this more complicated five liner here, right? So, um, so let's go back in. Uh, so let's go back. So this one is the original one, uh, original code, and you can simply replace. So fill in these addresses instead of iterating over them explicitly in a loop. You can iterate over them implicitly in this for in this uh, um, context part of the set comprehension statement. And also, you don't need to define the loop variable i. You can simply define this underscore, which is like a throwaway parameter. Actually, if you define variables that you don't later need, it is not so clean uh, in, in 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 terms of. Uh, so it's not so clean code. So in any way, I think I think. Professor Zingaro actually uh, actually did this on purpose. So even though the alternative would be better, in my opinion, more Pythonic, he did this on purpose actually to showcase the working of the of the add method, the set add method um, addresses add and add an element because he discusses this later and and uh, told the reader that actually the set add method is more efficient than the list append method, which is which means that uh, which actually uh, leads to the argument that using sets here uh, is more eff efficient than using uh, lists. To, to actually uh, as a data structure for this addresses variable. So therefore, like um, I, I actually wouldn't, uh, wouldn't uh, consider this too much of an issue. Um, however, I found some, some minor instances, like let's copy another instance from page 226. Uh, here you see uh, uh, he checks, he develops some code where uh, for inverting a dictionary and here you see if not num in inverted and i think the slightly more pythonic way not not this is not my opinion this is like from the pep8 standard is if num not in inverted so the not keyword it should not it should be like you should use this as one operator not in as an operator rather than putting the not in front of the whole statement and implicitly actually uh, doing something like this, yeah, implicitly um, uh, using this uh, precedence operation. So you need to know about the operator precedence and so on. So it is like this using using it this way. It is 
the Java way, this is C++ way, but I wouldn't say, it, I would say it is not the Pythonic way. The most Pythonic way is to use the not in operator. And you, you can actually check it out. So if you go uh, to the to the PEP8 uh, style, style guide here, you see the programming recommendation. Uh, if you scroll down here, they give this example. Correct is if foo is not, so now they use is not rather than in not, but it, it like the same applies for in not. Uh, so the, uh, the correct one is actually using use this as one operator is not using it as one operator rather than using two operators like this uh, not foo is none so this not actually inverts this whole statement foo is none which is slightly less readable so but these are minor minor issues issues right but uh, i think these are very minor issues they shouldn't be uh, they shouldn't weigh too heavy uh, be, Anyways, like the technical execution is almost perfect. There are uh, there are very very few bugs and very few mistakes. So I think uh, I think it should deserve at least 4.5 out of five stars. Actually, I, I I thought about this. I initially I wanted to give five stars as well, but then I thought, okay, let's remain credible. So because there are some minor issues in the in in the code, so let's just make it 4.5 stars. But these are only like very minor technical issues. Okay. So overall, we get um, if you open the calculator. We get 5 plus 5 plus 4.5 and we divide by 3 which means that we get an overall rating of 4.8 so let's make it 5 star rating. So uh, overall my uh, book review is I think the book is an exceptionally well written technical Python book for beginners. It uses active learning techniques and if you are a beginner to intermediate coder then this book will significantly improve your Python skills. It is easy to read and solving the problems is fun and very satisfying in my opinion. So the overall rating is about the author 5 stars, the book idea is 5 stars and the technical execution is 4.5 stars. So the overall rating of the book is uh, 4.8 stars and you can round it up so actually it's 4.8.8333 uh, stars so you can round it out uh, up to five stars an almost perfect book for python beginners and intermediates alike okay so thanks for watching this uh, review and you should definitely check out the book i think it's uh, it's a very useful uh, book very well written book from professor daniel zingaro thanks for watching this video and see you in the next video bye